Hey, what's going on guys? It's Rocket Editor here with another Minecraft Bedrock tutorial once again suggested by the viewers. Today's suggestion came from Thailand Osborne and he asked, can you make a piss and fee tape type super smelter? And well, Thailand, does this answer your question for you? That's right, I have created a one wide tileable super smelter that can hold between 8 furnaces all the way up to 25. Now this is not my first time diving into the super smelter stuff. As you guys might recall, I created a super smelter video a while back. Link is on the screen in the description if you want to check it out, by the way. And it was super smart, but as this guy easily put it, it wasn't necessarily the cheapest. So when building this, I wanted to make sure to keep this as cheap but compact as I possibly could. So this is the typical furnace array that most people will see around people's bases, and this is what I built upon in my first video on a super smelter. Now, the only problem with this are the hoppers. The hoppers, as the hopper man likes to be, are very expensive. They require five iron ingots just for one hopper, including the chest. So if we count this up, that's 50 iron ingots in just the hoppers, and then another five for the hopper minecart. And this is only for three furnaces. So what I thought is, in Minecraft Bedrock, we can push hoppers, we can push chests, we can push furnaces, which you cannot do in Minecraft Java. So using that to our advantage, we can use pistons, which only require one iron ingot. This will require a little bit of redstone, but still is cheaper than making a hopper. And then we can create one of these. Now these require on just moving the furnaces around in a circle, and then just giving it a tick just to come in here, get items from the input, get the fuel it needs, and then deposit any items, any blocks, if it has any, and then we'll go straight back in the system, and just cycle around. But when counting up all the iron we use in all these um, pistons and these hoppers, we will see that it only has takes 33 iron ingots. And then if you want to have an even number, so for example, this is a 11 furnace array, so this will have 33. And then if you want to make an even 8, it will require one more iron. So this is going to be 34 iron furnace array compared to 55 iron ingots for just 3 Three furnaces for 55 compared to, what is this, 33, so this is 13 furnaces, and you only use 33 iron ingots combined. And again, you can use this for the 25 one too, it's just much longer. And the supply list really isn't that big, you only need one observer, which is the second most expensive thing, five hoppers, four sticky, four pistons, two sticky pistons, and again, like I said, this design needs a little modification, whether you want an even or odd number. So for odd number, you're going to need all of these on the left. And then if you want an even number of furnaces, so for example, 8, which is what I would most likely recommend for most Minecraft players, you're going to need the additional sticky piston, comparator, and two torches. And again, this can be for 8 to 25 furnaces. Once you have all your materials ready, let's begin the build. Now, in order to build this, you're going to need a 1 wide by 10 tall by 8 um, long area in order to build this. Um, the height will change depending whether you want more furnaces. So, for example, this is an 8 furnacer, and if you want 10 or 11, you're going to need to add 1 block down. If you want 12 or 13, you're going to add 2 blocks down, and so on. Now, if you now in order to build this, you are going to need a little bit of room space in order to access this. I have this set up so it's a five block access, but if you want, you can just put the floor here and have the lever sitting right on top of this. So that will give you a total of four blocks to access it. If you have a three wide ceiling, you're going to make some room in order for the top input chest. Otherwise than that, we're going to get started on this build. So starting off from where our floor is, we're going to come all the way out to where you have your open area. From that, we are going to first visualize where all our chests are. So here's our output chest. This is where I want that to be. And then I'm going to put a hopper here with a furnace right on top of it. So every time the furnaces come around in a circle, it gets set right here for a split second and then gets taken back. That's enough time for everything to go into the furnace and to be taken out all at that same instant. So from that furnace, we can put fuel in coming from the side. So we'll do that with a barrel. And then we can put things that we want to get smelted in from the top using just a chest like so. Now, if you put a double chest up there and you plan on filling that most of the time, then all you have to do is extend this normal chest out a bit and that'll give you full space and full coverage. 
Now, working backwards from that, we are going to, right here is where we're going to visualize all the furnaces are. So right here is where our furnace line is going to be set. And so that means right here we are going to have to have a sticky piston. This, like I said, is going to push it out and bring it back in. Now right up here we are going to have a normal piston, and that's going to push any furnaces that come above the sticky piston down. Now, in order to finish doing the rest, I'm going to put in just a couple more furnaces. So right here, I have seven furnaces, three, three, and one. These furnaces will stay the same for all of them, and then we'll just add more to the bottom depending on how big you want this. Now right up here at the top, we are going to have a repeater going into that block. So I'm just going to get, go ahead and get that. We'll have a repeater on one tick, and that's coming out from a torch right here on this block. And now that is powered right now then we're going to have another normal piston and that normal piston will be right here like so and then on top of that piston we'll put a torch now down here we're going to have our one observer that's going to go on the third one we'll have a block and then we'll have a repeater on four ticks then we'll have torch lock torch and then one more block and that should take care of it after you place that block in you have finished the upper half now, before we move on to the bottom half, this is where you have to decide how many furnaces you want. So, for example, if you want an even number, you'll just have it set up like this, so this is exactly 8. And then if you want an odd number, you'll set it up like this, so this is 9. We'll start with the odd, and then once we finish that, we will add on the additional even part in order to create it, in order to make it work. So at the very bottom here, we're going to have one of these timers. Now, this is a single piston timer, it's just going to go back and forth, and it's going to keep a repeated clock motion. This one will power this piston here, but also will power this piston on its retraction. So coming from underneath this torch, we will come a total of four blocks down. And then right here, we will place a dust upon that. So let me just quickly do that. We have dust, and then on top of that, we will have a, pist a sticky piston, right like so. And then underneath this, we will have a comparator. Now, from, from this, we are going to have two hoppers facing into each other, like so. And then we're going to put one of our dirt blocks in here. So I'm just going to place a barrel. You can place whatever block you want. Now, in order to stop that from going, I'm going to simply grab my lever and just place it there just to keep the silence down. Now, we will have a red, our one redstone block right by that, and then right here we will have a piston, just a normal piston, and that piston will be faced that direction, just like so. Now, on the back of here, we will come from that redstone block, and we'll have a repeater on two ticks, and now we'll go into a piston going straight up, like so. Now, if we turn this off, you will see that your entire piston ray is working now. Now, we don't want the lever down here. We want the lever up here. So in order to do that, we want to simply use a little um, a glass line, just like so, moving it just up a step. Now, because the height this is at, we are going to be a little stuck, and we're going to have to place the lever two out, not one. So we would have to place the lever here, and then we would just put redstone dust there. We ended up, instead of having nine furnaces instead we had 11 we could make this right up against the chest by simply having it set up simply like this so see right here this is on a little step ladder and if you want to go even higher then you simply just put glass keep on doing these glass blocks all the way up to the height that you want now that you have that you have finally completed your furnace array for an odd number in order to change this to an even number we're going to grab our sticky piston torches and our comparators that we didn't use before, and we're going to break out this center piston. We're then going to put a sticky piston right here, and then underneath, and then from this block right here, we're going to take a comparator output, like so, and then we'll put that into a block, and we'll have torch, block, and then we'll have one more torch. And now that you've done that, you've actually turned this odd smelter into an even number so this will be eight now so when you flick it it will take this piston all the way over and then push it straight up and i'll go right around in a circle just like so 
So with that, you guys have finished making this super easy, super compact super smelter, which is super easy on your iron supplies. So if you guys enjoyed, hit the like button, and if you really enjoyed, hit the subscribe button. But this has been Rock Builder. Thanks for watching.